What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy, Dr. Jay Phoenix Singh, coming at you to be able to answer a valued viewer's question. Always appreciate it when you guys do ask your questions. Feel free to do so in the comment section of any of my videos. Make sure that if you have a question that's really specific to you, you want me to take a look at your personal statement. You want me to take a look at review and give you feedback on your CV. You want me to help you get published. You want me to help you get into your favorite conference to be able to present a poster or a paper. Make sure that you just take a look at the website below and you book a one-on-one -on -one session with me. I work with students internationally all the time. Every single week, I usually have between five to six sessions. So if you want to book one with me, please do feel free to take a look below. I do have a couple of spots open right now because we've just gotten a couple of people into programs, which I'm super thrilled about. It's awesome, right? Uh, and I want to do the same for you. So make sure that you take a look down here and uh, book something with me. Uh, today's question comes from Amina. So Amina, thank you so much for asking it. I appreciate you watching. Appreciate you being a subscriber. And everybody who's not subscribed, please do hit that big old rectangular red subscribe button that should be at the bottom right, I guess, of this video. And also make sure to like this video, everybody, because it really helps us out a ton here on the channel and it's free to you. So I really appreciate that. So here's Amina's question. Amina says, can you be an academic without being a lecturer? I love the idea of having access to resources for research, being able able to connect with other people in the field, being in an environment where knowledge is held so dearly, and being on a college campus. But the idea of giving a lecture in front of 300 college students makes me kind of nervous. I mean, a great question, right? And I completely understand. Different people have different preferences, different strengths, and different things that they can improve upon if they desire to improve upon them, okay? For me, public speaking is like my thing, right? I've been doing it forever. I love it. That's my thing. Made a whole career out of it, right? But it's something where if you wanted me to like sit down and just do run data analysis all day, which I did for a long time, Amina, right? Oh, I, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. It's terrible. I love me some stats, but this idea of, you know, like sitting down all day, bup, 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 you know, mindlessly in front of the computer just absolutely kills me. Same thing with writing manuscripts and these sorts of things that I still obviously do, but it's just not my favorite thing. I would love to just teach full time and like, you know, that's it. Uh, but obviously, you know, especially when you're at the more prestigious universities, you know, that's what it takes to be able to kind of keep the game going. Going, right? So here's the deal. Uh, two things that I want you to know. The first one is that uh, in different uh, countries, right, there are different ways to be able to classify universities. So in the United States, for example, you have something called an R1, an R2, and an R3. Okay, an R1 is kind of like the big universities where the preponderance of the money that's coming in that's funding research is what we call soft money. What that means in a nutshell, like if I were to oversimplify it, I mean, it basically means that the money that goes into kind of funding professors and their research is not coming from the tuition of students, it's coming from external grant funding, okay? Meaning that essentially you need to get funding. You need to get grants. And this can be from nonprofits, this can be from uh, from private foundations, this can be from the government, can be from any kind of agency, right? But you need to get that money. And the money usually goes into a big old communal pot. The university takes a slice of it, which is called the indirect, right? Uh, hopefully you can team up with some people who also get some funding, and we call this in-kind funding, right? And at the end of the day, you go and you do your research and you're funded for a specific period of time. Now the good news about that is that if you do that kind of work, you, Amina, can buy out of courses, okay? If you get external funding, grant funding, you can literally buy out of those classes. And the way that you do that is basically, you know, go to your department chair, have a chat with them, see if that's possible. Uh, usually it is, especially the R1 universities. Uh, and basically you essentially pay for somebody else to come in and teach for you, like an adjunct or, you know, like an adjunct lecturer, or you can have somebody else in the department kind of take it on who wants to do a little bit more teaching, who maybe doesn't have any grant funding, you know, but still needs the money, whatever it happens to be, you can do that, okay? So that's one way to be able to get out of lecturing. The other way to be able to get out of it is essentially to be what's called a research professor. Research professors are 100% grant funded, and because there's nothing whatsoever coming from tuition of students and these things, there's no expectation that you're going to do anything but work on grant funded research, and that's it. So that's another way that you can basically, you know, do exactly what you're asking uh, here, Amina, which is can you be an academic without being a lecturer? All of this said, right, I do think that it's always good for all of us as human beings to be pushing ourselves 
a little by little, right? Uh, I used to date this girl, and her uh, her grandparents were awesome, and they told me once uh, after I met them, they said, uh, you know what? They said, inch by inch is a cinch, but yard by yard is hard. So obviously, you know, inches and yards being the non-metric version of you know measurements that we use here in the U.S. Uh, and an inch by inch is a cinch. A cinch means it's easy, right? In other words, uh, taking things in small bites is easy and trying to take large leaps and bounds is very challenging, right? So if you take it inch by inch and you just kind of expose yourself a little bit, maybe you want to start by giving like guest lectures for other people, maybe something like that, developing a few classes and these things, or co-teaching with somebody else. But I do think it's something where it's a healthy skill, public speaking, being in front of people. It is the number one social phobia, or the number one phobia period right is the specific form of social phobia that has to do with public speaking so know that you're not alone in that whatsoever some people are better at it than others I know tons of people who are better at so many other things than me right public speaking is something that I love doing right I've gotten talented at it but I can tell you that I remember the first time before I went in front of a class I mean and and you mentioned here or whatever of uh, being in front of 300 college students you know I've given talks in front of, of uh, what like three to five thousand people right um, and it's been fine and fun and I have a great time but let me tell you I remember the first time I mean that I gave a talk it was in front of 12 high school students and I almost fainted backstage like when I want to say backstage I was just outside the class Room. There wasn't even a stage to be able to stand on, but scared the bejesus out of me, right? So know that even people who love it and are passionate about that particular thing also have a tough time with it. It's not just you, okay? But I really want to encourage you, if nothing else, to be able to give it a shot, okay? So stay in touch. Let me know how everything goes. I appreciate all of you guys, and especially Amina today. Be sure to subscribe, like this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.